Border Regiment troops crossed the Channel almost as soon as the Second World War broke out, but they scarcely saw action for over seven months. Which made the German Blitzkrieg of May 1940 all the more devastating. The battle for France had begun, and the regiment was in the thick of it. The 1st and 5th Battalions were both in the retreat to and evacuation from Dunkirk. While further south, the 4th Battalion were fighting in the forest around Inchville. Their orders? Stop the Germans advancing at any cost. When the order came to withdraw, D Company was cut off and couldn't retreat. They fought to the end, and their appalling losses had a shocking impact in their hometown of Kendall, which was christened the Town of Missing Men. With the Blitzkrieg sweeping forward, the rest of the 4th Battalion struggled to avoid capture on its way back to England via Brest and Cherbourg. The Border Regiment's war began in defeat. Their four-year march back to victory in Europe would make them veterans of almost every kind of warfare, from desert to jungle to airborne. With France crushed, Germany joined Italy to dominate North Africa. This threatened the Suez Canal and with it Britain's access to Middle Eastern oil. By October 1941, the 51st Field Regiment Royal Artillery, the Cumberland Gunners, had relieved Australian troops besieged at the vital Libyan port of Tobruk, earning high praise from the Aussies. Now the Border Regiment's 4th Battalion relieved them in turn. They then stayed with the Gunners to help break out from Tobruk, link up with other British forces and start retaking Libya. Intensive night scouting was a crucial part of the preparations, and the 4th Battalion excelled at navigating stealthily across the featureless desert, with only a compass, the stars and their wits as a guide. The reward for their success, with over 5,000 Italians taken by surprise and captured, was five days Christmas leave in Cairo. The Border Regiment were no strangers to India. The 2nd Battalion were there when war broke out, by May 1942, so were the 9th Battalion, as well as the 4th Battalion and 51st Field Regiment, who shipped over for jungle training. Training complete, in late 1943 they became part of the Special Operations Force called the Chindits. From March to July 1944 they operated deep behind enemy lines, disrupting Japanese communications. For regular British troops this meant learning new, commando-style tactics to cope with jungle hazards like dry bamboo that crackled and gave your position away, or slimy dead leaves that often hid booby traps. Even the weather was hostile, ranging from monsoon floods to choking droughts. With so little water, the men had to shave in tea dregs. In sweltering heat, they moved supplies on foot, fighting dysentery and malaria as often as the Japanese. But they overcame the conditions, and by June 1944, they had done the same to the enemy. With the decisive battles of Kohima and Imphal, the combined efforts of the Border Regiment's battalions helped turn back the Japanese advance. The reconquest of Burma had begun. In late 1941, the Border Regiment's 1st Battalion began to learn a new kind of warfare as glider-borne infantry with the 1st Airborne Division. The training demanded fitness, skill and nerve far beyond that of most infantry units. In May 1943, they arrived in North Africa, ready for the invasion of Sicily in July. It was the first Allied glider landing of the war, and tragically, it was a disaster. Over 60% of the gliders hit the sea in strong winds and high waves. Many soldiers drowned. There would be little time to recover with replacement troops and swimming lessons for all ranks. The division landed in Italy that September. A year later, the 1st Airborne Division was tasked with capturing the road bridge and other crossings over the Lower Rhine at Arnhem in the Netherlands. In doing so, they set a new standard for determined fighting. This time they made an almost perfect landing just west of the town of Oosterbeck and took the Germans completely by surprise. Soon though, enemy reinforcements arrived and the division found itself dug into isolated positions, awaiting support that never came. They endured nearly constant bombardment with fast shrinking supplies of ammunition, food and water. By the time the survivors were extracted, nine days later, almost two-thirds of the 1st Battalion was dead or captured. 
but the Border Regiment's courage, discipline and honour earned them respect even from the enemy, whose surrender in Norway they would at last oversee in May 1945.